Hi, my name is Kevin Wendt. I'm a senior instructor for the Web Programming and Database Development Program here at Dunwoody College of Technology. Uh, this is another video in the series of introductory programming concepts for our intro programming students. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about one of the more advanced topics, it's uh, overflow. And, and this topic tends to get a little sticky, so that's why we broke it up into two parts. And hopefully this will help you figure out why these things happen that maybe you didn't expect. So here we have some code. It's a very straightforward code. It does have a while loop in it, so it will loop. You see up at the beginning, there is a line, integer i equals 0. So i is set to 0. We have a variable set to 0. And then the test is while i is greater than negative 1. Now, 0 is negative, greater than negative 1, so that's fine. So it will enter the loop. All we're going to do is print i and then add some positive number. So i is greater than negative 1. And we're going to add some big positive number. And that's it. That's the entire loop. Well, will it ever stop? And the answer is no. In, in computer science, what we call this is an infinite loop. There is no case in which this loop should end. It should go on forever. Because any, any number that's bigger than negative 1, if you add some positive number to it, it will just keep getting more greater than negative 1. So we'll just go on for infinity. So I, I chose 4,967 here just because when it's going to display, it'll give us some fun numbers to look at. But let's, let's go ahead and look at what happens. When I run, it's just adding and printing numbers. And it keeps going up and up and up. You see on the far left side, we're at 2 or 3. It'll just keep going up and up and up. An infinite loop is something that will, will go on forever. It's the theoretical idea of a loop should never stop. Now the question is, Will it ever stop? Is there anything else involved that will actually cause this loop to stop? And to think about that, we have to think about what it means to be on a computer and what it means to store numbers, even numbers this big, on a computer. Now, we're getting pretty big now. We're almost to the 2 billion mark. Now, when do you think this will stop? Do, do you think it will ever stop? Do you think it will stop at 3 million? When do you think it will stop? Well, if you guessed right about there, then you'd be right. All of a sudden, this, computer, this program just stops. It just ends. Not, no errors, no, no blowing up. It just ends right here. It's at 2,147,000,000 and 482,000 and change. Right around there is when it stops. But why did it stop? The only reason it should ever stop, according to the program, is if it's no longer greater than negative 1. But it stopped anyway. So why is that? Well, let, let's, let's take a look. Let's run a very, very similar program. This is almost the same program. The only thing I did was change it to be, instead of 4,967, to 49,675. That way we'll get a bigger number. It won't take so long to run through. And then, after the loop is finished, I'm going to print what i is. So let's take a look. This will run pretty quick. So we run through, and it goes fast. Now look at the bottom. Look at the very last number. This is the one that printed off after the loop. It's negative 2,147,467,000 and some change. But why is it so negative? If we were adding. 49,675 to some big number, why isn't it just a little bigger? Why is it negative all of a sudden? That's the big question. How did it get so negative? That, that, that explains why the loop stopped, is because negative 2 billion is not greater than negative 1. So that makes sense. But why did it go to that number? That's the big question. And the answer to that question lies in how we deal with, with numbers on computers. So and in the next part, that's what I'll be talking about.